Hi everybody, my name is Shauna Shands from Shauna's Designs. I appreciate um, Corey asking me to make a tutorial on a mini album that she saw on my blog. This would actually be the mini album that she was absolutely in love with. I originally saw this mini album by a lady named Laura Dennison. Um, she did it a few years ago um, and copied a tutorial um, basically made it from a lady named Marion Smith. She is a Prima Educator. As you can see, it's a really small mini album. It's not that big. And it uses envelopes. You can use any size envelopes, scraps, anything you have that would coordinate with the theme that you're doing. Um, the envelopes create little pockets for you to just add little things into. And today, I'm going to go ahead and show you how I made it. Um, for that particular mini album, I use three number 10 business envelopes. You can use the ones with the flaps at the top or on the short side. Um, what you want to do first is you're going to, if you're buying envelopes that have adhesive, just peel that strip, add a little bit more glue to the sides. Um, of course, I already glued this one. Um, Actually, I can just go ahead and glue this one too. Um, you're going to remove that. I apologize if you hear my daughter. She's watching a movie. There's also some thunder and stuff outside. We've got some really bad weather coming in. Um, so I apologize too if the lighting's not the best. Um, so you're going to go ahead and let that set. As I stated, this is the number 10 business envelope. So you're just going to go ahead and cut it in half. So that's at four and three quarters. Next, to make this, you're just gonna go ahead and cut some flaps. Um, I also have um, a quicker way to do it. Um, of course, for the mini album I'm making, I'm just gonna cut my corners. You can use a paper rounder or, or a corner rounder. Um, if you have the quick punch, it's really quick and then fold the flap down in half. Um, but for this one, we're gonna just go ahead and cut a corner. Um, you flip it over. It's real simple. Um, unfortunately, I don't have the best of study of hands, so I just go ahead and draw. I cut one corner and then I just draw the rest in. Um, it's really quick and simple. There's really no measuring involved. As I said, you can use whatever size envelopes tickle your fancy. Um, also, if you know you get a lot of those junk mail envelopes. Um, you can use those envelopes and recycle the mail that you get that you don't really want that you just kind of toss out. I know I get tons of those little different um, mails for like a credit card applications. You can definitely use those. Um, I've also seen some weird kind out here, um, different shapes. But what you'll want to do is you'll want to go ahead and take one of the flaps and just fold it over. Something else I do, um, this is just me, to make sure I try to keep the thickness of my mini album the same. When I cut my flap, or when I cut my envelopes, you can see a flap here. I just alternate and flip one side over so that I've got a flap at the bottom and then a flap at the top just to keep the thickness the same. I try to make it not too big on one side or the other, top or bottom. So once you get those folded in half, what you'll want to do is pick out some papers. You can use any papers that you want. Um, I had already started. Can you please go watch a movie? I had already started this and my daughter started acting up, so I apologize. Um, I went ahead and picked out some papers and you just glue the whole part. Um, make sure it's flush and good and sturdy. If you're going to have your mini albums handled a lot, it's best to use score tape. For this project right now, I'm just using a uh, quick adhesive. It's not too big of a deal for me. I don't really have a lot of people handling my mini albums here in my house. So um, once we get that part done, you're going to want to get your corners covered. So for this, um, as I already started this to make sure the tutorial goes just a little bit more quickly, I went ahead and picked out one solid color that I want the overlapping flap to look like. So as you can see, just coordinating colors, um, try not to overdo the same ones, Just kind of pay a little bit of attention depending on the type of uh, mini album you're using. 
and who's going to be having it. Some people don't really care. Some people are meticulous. Um, just really depends. So what you're going to do is you want to just go ahead. I guess we can do it this way and lay your paper in and just flip that over. Try to keep it flush and just go ahead and flap it over, rub it down, make sure it gets on there really, really good. The awesome part too about wet glue is if you put it up too high, you can kind of just take it off and do it before it gets really set in there. The downfall with using wet glue is if it doesn't dry super, super quick, it makes a little bit of a mess, but of course um, it really depends on the person if you want wet glue or if you're just a quick score person, use score tape or whatever really works for you. As you can see, this little piece here, all you gotta do is just go in and cut it off. And then again, just cut this little corner right here off. Real simple, and then you've got a nice little flap. If you notice there's any pieces that aren't um, sticking down too well, just go ahead and smooth over it with a little bit more glue. Um, you could definitely use a glue stick. In my experience, glue sticks don't last long for me. Um, the paper actually does come apart. So once that piece is done, um, we're going to just take our scraps from what we covered our front pages with and go ahead and use the opposite and just tuck that on in there um, to get that fit. Make sure you use whatever kind of piece that you can. Um, it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, a lot of it's going to get covered. Um, it's going to get covered up by whatever you tuck in the pocket too. So just keep that in mind. Let's see if I can get this open. There we go. And just kind of smooth it out. And just go ahead and tuck it on in there. If you can, kind of. Just put it on in. See, that's almost dry. So what we're going to do is, same thing that we did with the front, just snip, snip, and snip. Now, of course, you can use this for a scrap to use this as a border. Um, I've got a little bit more scraps than I would like to have, but um, there's your first page that you've got done. Of course, I'm sorry if you heard thunder. We've got some bad storm rolling in. Um, I'm going to hurry up and do this other side. I hope I've got enough to cover that. I don't know which side I should do. So it's cut right there, so we'll just kind of go ahead and add that to. Ooh, I didn't do a good job. Sometimes you might want to pay attention to that too if you. Mommy's busy, baby, please go watch your movie. Um how you want to flush it up. Um, if you've got larger papers, that's the more the better. Um, for me, unfortunately, I'm using a six by six pad at the moment. Um, it works really good with whatever papers you want it to work with though. And then we'll just go ahead and mount it down, squish it on there really good. And then, you know, like I said, just use your scrap from your other paper. And sometimes it helps too if you just kind of pre cut whatever the size is. 
So that way, oh, and I made that too small. That way it just slips in a little better. My glue is already drying. Just pop that open. Just rub that in. And then it's still just a little too big. Just go ahead and slide. See, there we go. That's perfect. Slides in a little bit, rub it down. And then we'll go ahead and flip this over. Just snip, snip around the envelope. And then see, you've got your flap. And we'll do the same thing with this side. Just come on in and trim it all off. Get some more scraps out the way. And there you have two pages. Um, if you want, you can go ahead and cover the backs um, because they are, like I said, you know, it's a mini album. I am going to leave one of mine blank at the moment. Um, I'm not sure 100% what I want my back side to look like. So since this is going to be my front page, we'll just go ahead and adhere this to it. You want to get this really good and covered. Goodness, I swear some of these pages, paper is never 100% the correct dimensions. They say that it is. Sometimes you'll have a little bit of a hangover. Um, of course, that can always be covered up too um, if you like to ink your edges. Once again, you know, really no measurement involved unless you want to. that down and then there's your page so what you're going to want to do next is you're going to need a hole something to punch holes I use a crocodile I call it my crocodile puncher um you just want to go ahead and that last little corner and um, punch your holes. Um, the awesome thing I love about this thing is you can actually measure how far in you want it to go and it stops the paper from going in there. So I just, you can make threes, you, you make three holes, you can make two holes, it's just really however you want the paper to go. Um, I've already done some of my holes on these, but what you wanna do is you wanna go ahead and line them up and just take a little marking utensil so you know where to punch your holes at. And go ahead and start punching some holes. I do not have the world's steadiest hands. <laughs> Hence why I am not a surgeon. So this is going to be my, I think this is going to be my top or middle page. I'm not really sure. I really like how plain the paper is um, for the image that I'm using. This one's done. This one's done. This one's done. Let's get these last two pages. Um, because of how thick it is, I've never really tested it to see how much paper it can go through. 
but if you want, you know, you can do two at a time as like I'm doing now. <laughs> um, next, you just want to make sure you get them in an order that you like, that you favor. This is going to be my last page, so I'm kind of letting that one hang out. I was thinking about having this one as my first. So, this one we probably don't want as my first as, like I said. You can see that little bit there. I'll just ink it up and cover it. You want some coordinating colors, though. You definitely want to mix things up, not have it be too much of one thing, per se. Like this, I covered the back up. I don't want it to match that flap, so let's move this to here. There, perfect. Um, so next, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to get your flaps down. In order to do that, um, I just made little flower groups, different little flowers. Um, you can definitely use whatever you want, some string. I already went ahead and made some different combinations of flowers that I like that coordinated with it and then brought over just a couple extras to play with um, in case I didn't like what I saw. Um, so let's get started with that. For this page, I think it looked really good maybe to have the purple. Let's see if there's anything else I'd really like the purple to stick out with. I think I really like that because there's a lot of purple in this. Yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and glue it down. Um, don't worry too much about overlapping. Like I said, you've got a pocket. So whatever you put in there um, really doesn't make it too much. Since this one has stripes, I think I'm going to go ahead and use this one because it's got the orange flower and the yellow flower. So go ahead and just glue this one down. And because of how I'm gluing it down, it's getting the glue um, on the flap and the actual envelope itself. Um, I'm not real sure about my last one yet, but what we'll do is go ahead and see. I need since this one's darker, I'll use this one. I'm kind of glad I pulled that out because I only pulled two little dark flowers. Um, you can go ahead and use. I like to use hot glue when I'm setting flowers because it just dry it. it quickly gets it done. I'm, I'm always afraid of something not getting a full chance to dry and fall off. So like this one. See like this one has green on it. So does that one. Let's see, I think this one will look good with another dark flower. So maybe we can oh, that's a little too light. Maybe we can use this with this. And we can lighten it up that way. Adds a little bit of difference. This one doesn't really have any green on it like this one does. So maybe I can cover it up and use polka dots or pink. Pink and purple. Maybe you can use the orange. Cover up that green a little bit. If you don't like your flowers too, you can always paint them and make them a different color. You can use some distress inks, just anything on how you want to create your creation because that's basically what you're doing is making something your own. Um, you don't ever have to follow what someone else does. You can use anything to adhere the center. Um, I like to use brad sometimes. I've used eyelets. Um, you can also use brad. Um, jewels. You can also use some bling. Um, it really depends on what you want to create in a look and a feel for. So like these ones here, I really like this set. Just kind of glue that one down since I'm not closing them off with a brad. Just add a little bit more glue. And just push that and hold it down. Let's see these ones. And then just for like a centerpiece, like I said, if you want like some bling, use some bling or um, pearls. I really haven't figured if I want it ultra vintage, but we'll go ahead and add that in. And see, it just adds like a nice little touch to the center. Um, it really depends on the look you're going for, but whatever you feel, just go ahead and go for it. This one. I don't really see much blue, 
um, on this page so I'm going to go ahead and combine these with the blue brad push it all the way through you play with it a little bit spin it till you like the way it looks depending on the different flowers you use sometimes they don't always combine the best together but remember it's it's your album uh, unless you're making it for somebody who wants something specific um, nothing's ever perfect in my mind um, everything that's what makes everything unique to me I think so now that we've got our pages for the most part almost assembled go ahead and stack everything back up and do this last one this one I can be out of the world different and go ahead and add a black brad just to really make it stand out I might go back and actually distress um, these pages up just a little bit I'm out of focus so oh, hold, on. hold on let me see if the light alters my focus I hope that looks better. It looks better on my screen, but Ooh, just a little bit more. So once you do that, like I said, you can really use whatever you want to use. Uh, okay, baby, finish your movie, and I'll be in there in a minute. Sorry. Um. You can use binder rings. These fit perfectly through the holes that I punched. Um, with crop dial, of course, you can use whatever you want to use. Um, if you don't like that and you want to use string like I did on my first one, you can definitely use that. Um, but for this one, just for quick purposes, I think I'm going to go ahead and do binder rings. As you see, um, if you want to doll it up, you can definitely use um, some lace or ribbon, um, maybe some cheesecloth. Uh, but here's a good quick close up. Um, you know, here you still have your pocket. The flower is not really intervening with that. Next, you've got um, just anything you want to do to put inside these, you're more than welcome to. Um, for the cover, I'm going to go ahead and add this cute little flower girl image um, from Perry Fairy Fridays. I went ahead and colored her. Yellow is like my favorite color right now, so um, I thought about doing that. And um, I really love roses. I don't think I have enough roses in my stash. And if you were to see how many roses I have for flowers, I got tons. I'm a flower hoarder. Um, I'm not quite sure how I want to mount her yet um, on here. But I will have pictures finished showing you each individual page and inserts um, just to keep it a little short. Um, quickly, I can show you some of the inserts that I made from my other one. Um, here, I just did a quick, um, a quick mat, photo mat. You can do some journaling, have another photo. Um, this one, it was just real quick. I used the corner punch. You can use photo mat, journaling whatever you fancy this one i played with corner punches once again you know photo mat or journaling whatever you want to do for the insides it's your book it's your creativity this one i did just a quick little window you can do whatever pleases you and um, there are some very creative ideas out there this one i just tied this off with ribbon and i added a flower to the tag itself um, you can create your own tags or you can, um, I know a lot of people like the Tim Holtz tag dies and buy tags. This one I created just a little half circle. I did a lot of distressing, um, on this mini album. I love distressing everything because it just makes it look 
a little bit more authentic um, and a little bit more personal, I think. Uh, used a lot of pearls, a lot of different embellishments, um, stuff that I just had laying in a stash. I did a lot of paper cut-ups. This one I made like a little pocket tag, uh, tied it off with some just real easy trim that I had just laying around in my stash. Um, use your punches, use your dies, use leftovers, pearls, swirls, flowers. Um, whatever you fancy, it really is your creation. So just have fun with it and play with it. And I will have pictures of the finished product for you shortly. Thanks. Bye.